the construction of an iconic and monumental civil engineering project, the Lagos Calabar Coastal Superhighway. When completed, the 700 kilometer long coastal highway will enter the record books among iconic coastal routes like the Pacific Coastal Highway in the US and the Wild Atlantic Highway in Ireland. The first phase of 47.47 km starts from Amadu Bello Way, Victoria Island in Lagos, and the coastal road will pass through the lucky deep sea port Ogu, Ondo, Delta, Bayelsa, Rivers, Aquaibom, before culminating in Cross River. But that's not all. The superhighway, which has been built by a high tech construction company, has five lanes on each side of the dual carriageway and a train track in the middle. And to avoid delays, the Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, has been up and about ensuring compliance with contractors. Mr. Umahi says the coastal road will, among other things, further integrate the north and south in terms of movement of people, goods, and services. We are very confident that this project, 700 kilometers, under the phases two, it will be uh, uh, executed successfully under President Bola Ametini. But while the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road will usher in a new era of ambitious infrastructural development projects in the country, vendors at the popular landmark beach resort site built to be pulled down are struggling to come to terms with the seven-day demolition notice. We're given seven days to leave, seven days to do what? How, what do you begin to pick up for, 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 for seven days and to wear? So if, 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 if it comes to, you know, to that where we have to leave, I can't do anything. I'd pack up my suitcases, give up the flat, give up the business and go back to the UK, which would be a shame because we're the ones who constantly sing the praises of this country, this place. We have really sprung to action. Kemi Oshinibi is the CEO of Landmark Kids Club. She tells me it's been terrifying the past one week. I have about almost 27 staff here um, with our total ecosystem that we support is almost 100 people. Um, and right now, everyone is feeling very uncertain. Everyone is feeling very scared. Um, and it's, it's really unfathomable right now. It's really, really, really upsetting. Very, very, very upsetting. But there is some sort of optimism from the CEO and founder of the Landmark Africa Group. Obviously, there's several conversations that are taking place. Um, I've had at all levels of governments, both state and federal, I've had incredibly positive feedback. Um, and some of the noises coming out of the government in terms of supporting businesses, supporting FDI, increasing tourism. There's a, both a commissioner for tourism and a minister for tourism for the first time in Nigeria at the same time. Tells you that there must be someone that's saying that we're serious about tourism here. Um, so the, I can't see how um, a collection of decisions will lead to the demolition of effectively the most impactful and largest tourist platform in West Africa. I'm standing a few meters away from the beach and the currents have been really strong so I cannot go any further. But take a look at the children, the family and friends and perhaps colleagues who have come here to unwind and get away from the business and hustle Lagos is known for. All of this could be torn apart any moment from now if the government goes ahead with the planned demolition. But for the over 3,000 staff who work here and earn a living from this, their future hangs in the balance with the proposed planned demolition to make way for the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road. From the landmark beach area here in Lagos, Nigeria, Kelly, Egiga, Channels, Television News.